Hey there guys, so I'm gonna show you in this video how to make fancy bacon, which is the belly wrapped around the pork loin all in one piece, uh, right from the whole hog. So you kinda need to get a whole hog from this. It's not something that, uh, for this, it's not something that you can kinda pick up off the grocery store, but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna get, uh, I've got a couple done here. So this is a piece of the loin and the pork belly attached in one piece. And what we do is we take, there's that pork loin, there's the pork belly. We take it, we cure it all, and we wrap it around itself and make great big pieces of bacon. And we call them fancy bacon. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. All right guys, so we get the piece to make fancy bacon, which I also think is called schinken speck, but I'm not 100% sure on that because I don't speak German. Uh, we're gonna break the pig between the fourth and fifth rib or if you want, you can break it between the third and fourth rib. I break mine between the fourth and fifth. And then we'll break it down the H bone channel. So that will give us the loin and the belly attached. But I'll bring you guys in so you get a better view of that. Okay guys, so this is our side of pork here. Uh, he's got the stamps on him. He's an inspected piece of pork. <clears throat> so we're gonna count up off the ribs guys here. One, two, three, four. So between the fourth and fifth, that's where our first saw mark is gonna be. And I just make a little mark or you can do between the third and fourth, just move up a rib. And then, this is the tail end of the pig, this is the rear leg. And as you can see guys, it's a little bit difficult, but there is the H bone there. And then this is the spine and the tail comes up here. So you just take your knife and you follow kind of that natural angle that's there. It's kind of like a 45 right through that channel. And that's where you make your other saw cut. And that's gonna leave you the loin on this side and the pork leg on the other side. Just take your handsaw, follow that channel. You're gonna break through the tailbone. And then break through the femur. Then I usually put a little tension on the one side so that you get by the bone. And just pull the leg off. Back to the other side. There's the front leg of the pig. This is the jowl. That's where his head used to be. So this is kind of like the chuck on a beef or whatever. The commercial shoulder on pork. So I see my line I've marked there between the fourth and fifth. Just break through the spine. And then there's a blade bone underneath, maybe a little brisket, soft brisket bone you gotta go through there on that end. And when you're through, take your big knife, put a little pressure on this side to open it up. See how that opens it up, takes the tension off the bone. Voila. So now we have the tenderloin here, the belly, the side, rib, the side ribs, the back ribs, and the pork loin. A little better side angle. So that looks a little more familiar. Does that look like bacon? That looks like a pork chop. Done it right. Now what I got to do guys is this is a skin on pig. So I'm going to skin this off. Take the tenderloin off the butt end of our loin. So here, that's that femur bone. And this muscle here is the tenderloin, so I'll peel him out real quick. So I, you just grab him there, and you can see right there, that's where he attaches. Pull that tenderloin out of the way. And they really just kind of fall out. Nick there, he should be done. Voila, pork tenderloin. We won't need him today. Then I go down, follow this spine line. Then it turns the corner and the first joint after that. Okay guys, so you follow the spine down and then it turns the corner here. So it's this little joint. I'm not sure if you can see it real good. There's kind of like these jelly spots in between each joint right there. Those jelly spots in between each joint right there. So you put your knife in and you're able to cut through and I'll show you that, I'll back it out now. Okay guys, so the first joint after the corner, put my knife in. And this way, sorry, and square it off. Thick cutting through the skin, you can flip it over Got your knife line, just follow your knife line. 
and it should just twist off. Wow, so that's kind of the buckeye or the butt end of the loin. So now he's looking nice and square, so we'll be able to wrap that up. And it's just skinning time, so all I do, you can see the, where the skin meets the fat. Just get your knife just under the fat. And skin away. Trying to stay close to the skin so that you're not carving into any meat or losing any yield if you can. So I'll bring you guys in once I got it all skinned. Okay there guys, so I, a couple poles poked in there. I wouldn't be able to make a football out of this one, but uh, we got the skin off. The pig there, fairly lean little guy. So if you mark into the meat a little bit guys, you know, I ended up taking a little bit too, fat, too much fat off over here, but that's okay. I mean, it's not like a ton left on the, the meat, but you could scrape that off if you wanted to. Save it for sausage. There's uh, it all skinned up. Now the next step is we got our bones in here still guys. So we're gonna have to take those out so we can fold it up on itself and tie it. So it's the same if you've ever cut like a boneless, if you got a bone in pork loin and you want to turn it into a boneless pork loin, you want to start up at the top. See there's the bones that kind of come in here. The split was just a little bit off the midline. So you just kind of get your knife in behind there, staying nice and close to the spine. And so the whole process of this is basically just getting your knife against the bones. This isn't that, it, you know, like anybody can do this. So you can take your time, make sure you're nice and close against the bones. There's a little bit here up against the spine that's a little bit difficult to kind of got to come over top of uh, some bones. Or if you're having difficulty, you can always start on this side. There's a little bit of cartilage from the side ribs that comes down here, uh, but you can kind of peel towards that way and meet at the middle. Like the most difficult part is gonna, there's little bumps around here, is just gonna be getting over those for you guys. Just kinda, if you leave a little meat on, it's not a big deal. You gotta have meat, extra meaty ribs. It's your guys' pig to learn on, so. Once you get on those ribs, you just keep your knife tight to the ribs. That's where I like a semi-flex knife. I find it much easier. Staying nice and tight to the ribs. Come out the other side. And go all the way down the ribs. Staying tight, if you can. Then it starts to open up for you. Couple feather bones on the tail end. Come flat off. I should kind of break through. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky where the, the cartilage, see how that's kind of off there now? You kind of just gotta pay attention along here where the cartilage starts and the bone ends and the meat starts. You don't want any cartilage in your bacon because it's kind of gristly and chewy if you had that on side ribs. But if you're kind of lifting, as you can see, if you're lifting and pulling away, it kind of tells you where that seam is. You kind of just make little marks and it'll show you, show itself to you basically. Voila. So there we go guys. That's kind of what the bone structure looks like that you're trying to pull out. You got the spine here, baby back ribs, side ribs. So that's kind of what it looks like. That's what it should look like when you're done. On the bone side and you save those for making baby backs and side ribs and stuff. But this is the piece we're going to use for making fancy bacon. And the uh, next step is to grab a weight off of it and cure it and tie it up super tight and let it cure in the cooler for a couple of days. But uh, oh, another thing, another step we should do here before I get too ahead of myself is I like to take the fat down a little bit, no more than kind of half inch on bacon, down to a quarter inch if you want a little bit leaner bacon. Just kinda, there's usually a little bit along the ridge there that can be cleaned up. That's where it concentrates first. And people complaining about fatty bacon. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned, we're gonna dry cure this. Makes, just makes so much better than brine stuff, dry curing. Not much there. There we go, how does that look guys? A little better? Sure. All right guys, next step, I'll grab a weight off these. I've got a couple more to do. We're gonna do a bunch at once. 
and uh, I'll give you guys the recipe and cure them up. Okay guys, so the next step in making fancy bacon, which I think is called Schinkenspeck in Germany, not sure, but I'm sure you'll correct me, which is good, uh, is to apply our seasonings. I did grab the weight off these guys. I got three that I'm doing. Three big loin belly combinations for our meat shop. And these are John Beechner's pigs. I'm not sure if John's ever gonna get a chance to watch this, but John Beechner raises some nice pigs. That's why we're making this out of them. So I got three. They all add up to 25 kilograms. And I have pre-weighed out the spices for this, guys. And the recipe is the exact same as the dry cured bacon recipe. If you've seen the dry cured bacon recipe, it's exact same. Don't mess with something that's not broke. But if you haven't, here's the recipe for you. All my recipes in grams per kilogram, so I have 25 kilograms between these three, so I multiply all these spices by 25. So salt, 25 grams per kilogram. Sugar, 20 grams per kilogram. Cure, number one, 2.4 grams per kilogram. Sodium erythrobate or a cure accelerator, 3.5 grams per kilogram. So that's the recipe I used for these guys. Salt, brown sugar, cure, and cure accelerator. I got that all mixed up right here. Our lovely golden brown sugary mixture. And these are amazing guys. So the key with these guys is the loin piece here. You see, I got the loin muscle right there. This is the bacon strip. The loin's gonna take a little bit longer to cure. So you're gonna wanna make sure, you, and it's not gonna cure very fast from the, the fat side. Uh, cure, dry cure penetrates quite a bit slower through fat. So give it a nice heavy shot on there. Uh, and this isn't gonna be like a three month project like making a prosciutto ham or anything like that because uh, we're applying this cure flat. So a dry cure penetrates at about three quarters of an inch per day uh, as a rule. And since we're applying it flat, you know, the biggest part here is what's well, called two inches. Uh, sorry. I got that wrong. A dry cure penetrates at three quarters of an inch per week, not per day. Uh, that'd be a brine. So this guy here is, you know, maybe two inches at the most, but it's gonna be coming from both sides. It's gonna come a little bit slower from the fat side. So I'm gonna have these guys sit vacuum packaged with this dry rub for about 14 days, maybe a little extra. Uh, and they'll be cured all the way through. We shouldn't have any green spots. And the thing we can do to help that, guys, is take this dry rub and really work it into the loin side. That will kind of speed it up. Get it into those seams without ripping the seams apart. Uh, if you do pull the seams apart, it's not really a big deal because this salt is going to encourage protein extraction. So it's just gonna bind up into like one piece when you're done. It looks beautiful when you're done. It's like one of my favorite products we make. We just started making them here a little while ago because we started getting onto these pig carcasses from John Beechner and they look so good. But yeah, don't be afraid to really rub it into the loin. Okay, so that's the tip. The rest of the dry cured bacon is the same. You don't gotta worry about that because it'll cure at, uh, it'll be cured over on the, on the bacon side. It's nice and flat, nice and thin compared to the loin. And any stuff I spill on the table, guys, I'm gonna make sure it ends up in the vacuum package bags because it's weighed out specifically for this amount. So you wanna make sure you use all of it. So those guys are pretty good, pretty well taken care of. Flip it over and do the fat side. Be sure to get the loin spot first. Rub it in the sides too if you got leftover. All right, you can rub that in too, guys. And especially in any little meaty places you see. But uh, once you get it tied up and into the vacuum package brine, uh, vacuum package, it kind of makes its own brine because it pulls a little bit of moisture out of the meat and, that, and then it sits in its own moisture. So next step though is to do some tying. You're gonna be doing a lot of tying. You want them nice and tight. Okay, so I just got some medium thickness butcher twine. And if you haven't seen my how to tie a butcher's knot video, that'd be a good one to check out before this because that's the knot I'm going to use because uh, you can tighten it up on itself and that really brings that uh, meat together. So you're gonna grab it, this is the loin end, this looks like a piece of bacon here that hasn't been cured. And you take it and you wanna use a lot of weight like and 
tighten it up over on itself, kind of like you're making pancetta. If you guys ever made pancetta before. <laughs> it's not going to be perfectly round, but like so. Put a little weight on it. You don't got to worry if there's little air pockets in there. We're not like air drying it for weight loss and stuff. But uh, just started the thick side. And I go about every, I don't know, inch or three quarters of an inch. Your finger's gonna be a little bit raw after this because there's lots of salt. So I'm gonna be tying this for the next little while, guys. But you wanna go about every inch. And you can lean on it every so often to make sure it stays nice and tight because you want the contact of the, the surface of the meat to contact one another to allow that protein extraction. So you get one nice big piece of fancy bacon. So I'm just gonna tie it guys and show you what that looks like when it's all done. Okay, voila guys. Here's our tied pork loin and belly combination. I'll bring in for a little close up here so you can see how the spacing worked out. All right guys, see how I got it along here? I got them sucked up nice and tight. So I spent a little while making sure I'd, you know, I'd put a little bit of pressure on with my body, snug the next line tight, put a little pressure on with my body, snug the next time line tight because you want that all to be making contact so that over time these are going to, they're gonna, the protein extraction is going to occur and they're, they're gonna be one solid piece of bacon. Real key. All right guys, the next step in this process is I'm just gonna take these big honking units and cut them in half and put them in my vacuum packager. Now I was thinking a lot of you guys probably don't have vacuum packagers that big. So what I would suggest doing is getting a cooler uh, that's nice and clean and uh, popping them in the cooler in the fridge and overhauling them so often. So moving them around maybe every day, every other day. So the ones on the bottom are on top and, and vice versa. But uh, if you do have a vacuum packager that's big enough, that's uh, the answer here. I just cut them in half between the strings. And uh, this is what we're gonna get in the end. That's what our bacon's gonna look like. So I'm just gonna cut them all guys. And all this <clears throat> brown sugar and stuff that's on the table, you can see I'm not gonna let that go to waste. That's gonna wind up in the bags uh, because you don't wanna be too shy on your cure and flavor and salt and stuff. So that's the next step. All right, they're in the backpack bags. Threw a little extra salt and stuff off the table onto there, and we'll seal them up. All right, there he is all backpacked up. Now I'm gonna pop them in the cooler for 14 days, maybe a couple more, I'll let you know, and then we'll smoke them. All right, guys, our loin and belly bacon or shinken spack or fancy bacon whatever we want to call it it's been sitting in these bags for 15 days and as you can see they kind of make their own brine so that salt and sugar and stuff pulls out moisture out of the pork and there's all this liquid in the bag there now so they kind of make their own brine uh, but it's been sitting in here for 15 days, so we should have good cure all the way through like you can see on these loins I'll bring in a little closer. They're all nice and deep pink kind of got that glowing cure look on them So I'm just gonna pop this last guy in The smokehouse here, and I'll bring you in for a closer look All right guys so yes, they've been in there for 15 days and Look at that nice color on there Good and cured looking. They're, they're really sticking together there now. It's like they've almost glued themselves back together. So when we slice them, they'll come off in one big chunk. But uh, So they've been cured for 15 days. Now we're gonna take them through the smoke process. So I, you can let them drip dry at uh, just in the smokehouse at room temperature for an hour if you want. But I usually start to warm the smokehouse up and have the dampers wide open and fan on in my smokehouse. So first step's gonna be drying because uh, they're a little wet from the brine and stuff on the outside. So we wanna dry that off. Then I'm gonna hit them with hickory smoke for two hours, nice heavy hickory smoke. And then I'm gonna close the dampers off a little bit and begin to bring the internal temperature of these uh, bacon logs to 135 Fahrenheit. So first step drying, second step smoking, third step baking or cooking. 
So I'm gonna bring you guys back when they're all done and we'll have a look at them. All right there guys, so our round bacon or loin and belly bacon are at 135 as you can see. Look at that. Whew. And there they are. What a lovely sight, eh? Hey? Look at that color. Dripping with bacon fat, nice smoke cover, beautiful mahogany tone. So I'm just gonna grab these now, guys, and pop them into the cooler overnight to cool down, and we'll throw them on the slicer tomorrow and let you guys get the first look. All right, it's the next morning, and our round bacon here is cooled down. I'll let you guys have a close-up look. So there it is, guys, the round bacon's got that nice mahogany color. A nice face there. So I'm just gonna pop these strings off and then we're going to throw it on the slicer. All right, so just one by one, using the tip of your knife, take those strings off. All right, time to put it on the slicer and get our first couple slices. Got her loaded on the slicer, fire it up. Nice thick slices of bacon. The first couple are gonna be the face. So I save these back and uh, keep them from making sausage little bits of sausage and there we go that's starting to look like our round bacon guys starting to look pretty good and voila there you guys have it nice round bacon sticks together real good you fry that up fits on an English muffin just perfect or on a BLT round bun do up a couple more of these guys. I really should cook it for you. Get down towards the rib end there where, there, look at that, that's a beautiful shot. Nice marbled bacon, nice lean pork loin. There's the fat cap off the pork loin there. That would be the fat cap on your pork chop. And we still got a little mahogany tint or from that hickory smoke there. So there you guys have it. That's how I make the fancy bacon in the meat shop or round bacon or shink and spec. I'm not sure if shink and spec's right, but I hope you guys liked the video. I hope you guys uh, can find a pig, butcher it yourself, and uh, get this cut peeled off of there. If not, just ask your butcher to keep break the pork loin and the pork belly together and keep them together and debone it for you, and you can make this at home. It's super good bacon, really yummy stuff. So if you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care.